one of the things that we've learned is that when there's um, a lot of distress from moms and dads, there's more arguing and conflict in the family about diabetes. Parents that are super feeling distressed and overwhelmed by diabetes, they actually have children that also have less optimal glycemic control. Um, they have children that feel less confident and competent in their own ability to make decisions and take care of their diabetes. And they even sometimes have higher levels of depressive or even anxious symptoms. So for parents that are feeling very a lot of distress, um, my recommendation is to find great people to talk to, to get some support, sometimes in the online community, and to talk as a family about how to just help with that because it does affect the whole family, right? And moms and dads also say that they hate feeling like they're the diabetes police. So not only do children and teenagers feel like that's a source of distress for them, but parents also, like nobody wakes up in the morning and says as a parent, what can I do to irritate and annoy and bother my child today, <laughs> right? And then you don't set that as a mission. I think sometimes children feel like mom and dad maybe kind of like do that, <laughs> but I have never met parents that actually do that on purpose because it just, it doesn't feel good. Right, right. And then just really feeling just so upset and frustrated when you do everything you're supposed to do as parents and the numbers don't reflect all the energy, effort, and work that you do. And grown-ups with diabetes also have distress, of course. And we know that um, in research that has looked at distress versus depression, it's actually distress that is most strongly related to glycemic control more than even depression. Mm -hmm. So there's just something about that just exhaustion of diabetes that can affect your blood sugars. And if you have a lot of distress, it can actually increase your risk for becoming depressed by more than two times the risk. But there were some really nice studies that showed that when grown-ups can sort of treat themselves with a little more compassion, when they can be a little bit more forgiving of themselves, and when they can um, view things that are frustrating um, or negative, not as a reflection of who they are as a person, but just like as a temporary event, they actually do better. If you are the partner of somebody that lives with diabetes, you are the wife of somebody that lives with diabetes, that can also lead to distress. Um, mostly it's worries um, about um, your loved one having a low yes. um, and trying to engage in ways to prevent those lows without them getting irritated or annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> I always get a burden, some feeling um, with the person that I live with. I always feel like, I hope I'm not being a burden on you because I'm low and you have to get out of bed to run and get me something to drink. Or if you know, you're know you tired of driving and you want me to drive, but I, I just can't do it. You know, that that is the major anxieties that I have within being in a relationship with someone that's not a diabetic. So we know that if we try to work towards improving our distress, mm -hmm. um, and there are lots of different things that we can do, that it's going to help our A1Cs, it's going to help our daily self-care or energy to be able to do that the way that we um, think about and the decisions we make about diabetes and prevent us from sliding into burnout mm -hmm. or even depression. So some um, practical tips that I think are helpful is one is to just when things are frustrating, Try to find something that's beautiful to look at. Whether it's a garden, or going to a museum, or going to a movie, but just give your eyes a feast and look at something that's just beautiful. And sometimes that can help sort of reorient you for the other 23 hours. Right. Um, sometimes it's deciding that you need to take care of your body. And you said, you know, doing yoga or exercise or getting a massage, right? Or a manicure or pedicure or eating something that's just yummy, right? Just because it's just yummy, <laughs> right? Like count the carbs, free bolus. <laughs> just sort of give yourself that, you know, it's just sort of I'm doing this because it's just mm, so good. Or engaging your hands in something, right? Like building something, creating something. Like clay. The clay. Clay would be amazing. Be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Or really painting, cool. drawing, writing a poem, writing a story, journaling. journaling. But just something with your hands sometimes is a nice way to just kind of be kind to yourself and reflect on what you know, you're going through. Sometimes it's okay to just be kind to your brain because you're so exhausted and it's, you know, diabetes is one of those diseases where you're always thinking, right? So taking a nap mm -hmm. sometimes is a really nice thing to do. 
you know, and, and maybe just giving yourself a goal um, to look forward to that has nothing to do with diabetes. Maybe it has nothing even to do with like your career or work, but just <laughs> some kind of a goal that really is just something that's achievable that you can do. Um, and just sort of practicing forgiving yourself. So we talked today about distress and how it's normal and expected and that everybody can experience it. We talked about lots of different ways that we can take care of ourselves during distress and be good to ourselves and really decrease distress. And so there are so many different things that we can do to help ourselves, which improves both our emotional and behavioral outcomes, our psychological outcomes, but also our medical outcomes like glycemic control and the things that we do to take care of ourselves so that we are healthy. And that's really something that JDRF wants for all of us is to take care of ourselves so that we can do well and live well with diabetes.